to another version of Watch Me Teach This. Today, we will be doing painting and cutting in of walls in a basement project that we did a couple weeks back. So starting off, this is our 18 inch roller, which this roller was used to paint this texture ceiling that we did a while back. I'm gonna give a little picture of the painted ceiling. Normally we paint the ceiling first and then come and cut the walls in. All right, so starting off, we already got started with painting the walls as you're gonna see the process of that we use with this 18 inch roller. But first, we're gonna get our prep stuff ready, which I'll be using my mini roller and also my purdy. This is, what is this? Three and a half inch? Three inch. Three inch angled brush. When it comes to cutting, you want to use a quality paintbrush. Nothing cheap. The angle is the best thing that I believe to use. And if you see the extra discoloration in this paintbrush, I don't know what that's for, but... It's polyester. 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 Blend. Blend. This is the best paintbrush that you can use for cutting in. And also have you something that has a magnet on it to catch your paintbrush so you don't drop your paintbrush all the way down in your paint. And also, one key, whenever you're painting, try to get paint on half of your brush. If you got paint up here, you're not painting with that part of the brush. You want to use the paint down here, which you want to see. In order to ensure that you don't do that, when you pour your paint in here, you pour it in, to the level of where you want your paint to come up to. You don't need a full bucket of paint when you're cutting. So this is it here. Use your paintbrush to wipe the paint off, put it back inside of there, and also clear off the paint from the edge here. So that doesn't dry up, and when you come put your top on, the top gets stuck. So now that you got that done, Cover back up your paint. You don't have to push it on tight, but you want to push it on enough to where if you kick this over, you don't lose all your paint. That's just making your area properly prepared. So now you can see how much paint I got, got in here. And that if I do happen to drop it, I won't have paint come all the way up like I told you not to do. Now, for our rollers. All rollers carry a little bit of fuzz on them. So we like to try to pull it off. We already started painting, so I can't show you there. Rinse it off first. Rinse it off first. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can rinse it off, or you can use masking tape to pull off the extra fuzz so you don't have the fuzz on your walls when you get, get to paint. Which I don't have it, so I'm not going to worry about it. So we're going to get this started. So you can go on and continue rolling. He's gonna focus on me cutting. Yep, we're gonna work our way right on around. So we're gonna start over here where you got going at. A little too much water on it, that's okay, just water. important tool. You got to have a rag and it got to be wet. And it's pretty much self-explanatory what, what this is for. Whenever you drop something on the floor, wipe it up so you don't step it and then track it around the house. Whenever you hit your ceiling, wipe it up right away so it doesn't dry and you have to kind of take your texture off the ceiling whenever you mess up. So a wet rag is real important to have. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of rolling right now. So, when you're putting it in the paint, you never want to put the whole thing inside of the paint because you want to keep the paint off of here. If you stick this whole thing inside of that paint, this is going to drip all over the place. So, 
Make sure your roller never goes all the way deep down to the paint. And once you put it on there, you just take it off slowly and do this, get around the whole thing, pick it up, very minimum drips. You don't really see nothing, so that's how you want it. And when you start rolling, you want to start in the middle of the wall. Come up, come down, come up and over, come down, spread that paint out nice. We'll come for outlets. As you see, we have tape on the outlets, but that don't mean roll over them. Some people roll over, but I don't roll over. Get in the corners nice. You can take that, come in that way if you've got a corner like that. Okay, now, now this is a three quarter inch mat. It holds a lot of paint. But now when you really get to going, we're gonna go over the whole, the whole thing now just so I can keep a nice pattern. Make sure you ain't got no streaks in there. And see what you got. This is actually some pretty good paint here. To do this many rolls with just one roll. That's pretty good. I'm kind of dry rolling now, but I just want to see what I got up in here. And actually, I'm about to come and hit this again. Just to make sure my paint is not too thick up on here. tell you one coat applications that is very rarely untrue you would normally have to paint everything twice unless you're painting something with the same color if you paint it with the same color that may be a one coat application but whenever you're switching colors you will have to paint twice now this is the beauty of this mini roller here it's doing corners Okay, so that's a nice corner. Now we're gonna get ready to do some cutting. We're gonna go back over here to where we started at and start working our way around with cutting. Make sure you got to a nice height. Now this is the most important part, is how to hold this paintbrush. I was taught to hold my paintbrush like you hold a pencil. So you put enough paint on there, kind of dab it off on the edge, so you pat it, but you don't want to take all the paint off. So if you're able to twist it and no paint falls, that's enough paint. I can only paint this and hold it, but I'm gonna paint with one hand just so you don't have nothing in the way. Now I'm cutting. You start your cut just a little bit below what you're doing. Then that way you can come back up and prepare to push your paint into what you're doing. Let's get closer and closer. And sometimes you got to come from multiple directions. You want to push the paintbrush in and work it up slowly. See, because if you was to try to cut this and then put it right up there, all that paint gets stuck to the ceiling. So then I started with the bottom and I worked my way up slowly. So 
enough of that. And go again. Come across, get your paint spread out. You can come back the other way to make sure you got paint off the both sides. Then you're ready to come on up and work it up in there. And it's very good habit to start using both hands because you're going to have walls of where you have to be able to go both ways. Or else you're going to find yourself resetting your ladders multiple times if you don't learn how to paint with both hands. Or else you'll be painting and then your arms will get sore. So now, here comes my favorite tool again when it comes to painting. It's my roller. Same way, dip it in there and roll it multiple times, get it nice and empty. Now what I'm using this for, take all the brush strokes out of what I'm doing. I get as close as I can without touching the cylinder. And that eliminates your brush strokes. Then we come back and roll it our second coat, everything will get blended in. Coming on around. And now that I'm moving around off the corner, the next important thing is your ladder placement. You want to place your ladder in a way like, like now that I'm starting, and I'm going from both ways, and I'm going to reach it, go ahead and lock my wheels. That way I don't slide nowhere up against the wall. Also, you want to give yourself room to work. Right here is a little bit close, so I'm going to move this back a little bit. Just so I got room for my arm to actually work. If I'm too close to the wall, I can't do nothing. So, ladder placement is important. And as you notice, my ladder is placed to where I can go here and I can go there. That way you get more coverage done every time you reset your ladder. And this is really important when you're painting the outside of houses, that you have your ladder placement set real nice. <coughs> prepping your wall and what I normally do is I normally take my finger and I wipe them off with my fingers then I use my rag clean my finger off which I don't have any burrs because I'm not rolling but I guess that'll be an example of a burr there so if you do that then you come back and roll it in or brush it in but you can see how the brush marks look I don't like brush marks so I use that roller to fix that Other than that, pain is plenty, plenty repetition. You just do the same thing over and over, but you got the main concept, how to hold a brush, the right kind of brush to use, the way you place your ladder, and if you drop something, clean it up right away before you walk in it or have to use a paint remover to get it up if you wait too late. So we're gonna go all the way across. And sometimes you can do this too here. That way you use less paint on your brush to fill in, but you still have to come back and hit it anyway. paint up going one direction, come back the other direction. It'll only fill in better because sometimes your sill is a little crooked. But as you see, we're only using just the tip 
of the paint, but we're using it to where it smashes. And that's what gets up there. You don't want to take this whole thing and put a whole lot of paint up there. Just take your time, smash it into place. A lot of times you're just smashing it into place, then dragging it. When we have drips like that, catch them right away. But it's mainly, the technique is to smash it, to get it up there. You see very little bristles that are up top when, when you're cutting. Nice smash, smash and drag. Pretty good there. Unlock the wheels. We'll take the both corners. We're gonna come back and hit this corner here. Make sure this all rolled in nice for us. The stuff that you would normally do with a paintbrush, but that you got this right here. And this is a half-inch nap itself. That, that really opens my eyes, because I always use a, a brush in the corner. That's, that's pretty smooth. Pretty quick, too. Yeah. Now we got the trim. We forgot to do our cocking. We'll come back and cock this in later. You know, and a lot of people will take off their trim, but when you take off your trim, it tends to pull off the paint, or else, it still gets up inside of there. So when you got stuff like this is nice and open, it's just better just to go ahead and trim it out the skillful way. I say drag it, get it close. Then when you do the final, push it in there with just the tip. You don't need much. Make sure you're, you're nice and balanced. Oh, got a little paint on my trim. It happens to the best of us. We, we know you did that on purpose. I did do it on purpose. <laughs> but it happens. More often than times you would like it to, but you get it right away. That paintbrush with some hot water is the best thing to have. Quality paint goes a long ways. I can't emphasize that more. When you're buying paint, think about what is cheaper. To buy a $20 gallon of paint or to buy a $40 gallon of paint and have to paint three times versus two times. You add that up. <laughs> so those who wanna go buy cheap paint, I promise you, you will regret it. Pay for some good quality paint and get a nice quality brush. Purdy is the, not the best best, but it's definitely in the top 80% of brushes. Another thing that you should probably have too when painting is a light. A halogen light will really improve your painting skills. Now this is gonna be the fun part right here when it comes to corners. Everybody wanna know, how do you get up in a corner? Well, it's that pushing method that I told you. We'll move this up out of my way. Get in there and really see this here because this is real, this is real important. 
Um, you get right there and you'll be stuck. So you don't need much paint. You actually want to do it dry. Kind of push it in there. Get to them corners. Just push that up in there. You don't even drag it. Whenever I come look at a job, the first thing I go to is the corners. I want to see the detail work. That will show me the true skill of a painter. Around your trim or your doors, at the bottom of the floors, because a lot of people get lazy. They don't want to go down and they don't want to paint the bottoms because they don't want to get on their knees. A little bit of paint stretched out. Boom. Brush, roll in our brush marks. Only about a quarter inch of space. This is what I do. that's enough demonstration for this particular paint here so in conclusion the important things of painting proper brush and a rag this this ain't my brush though. proper brush and a rag and this is what you do if you want to get nice quality with no brush strokes and so I would encourage you to Practice, get you good tools, have you good equipment to work off. Equipment is very important. Nice, stable equipment. No buckets, no planks. Get you a, a nice ladder or a nice scaffold. Be safe, protect everything that you got around you, and um, have fun. Enjoy painting with your colors. Enjoy doing it yourself if you can, but, but, but when it comes to heights on the outside, I say hire a professional because it ain't worth it. But in, in the end, thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to my page, Mac Lamore, watch me teach this. Until then, be blessed.